3x squared is this function, so it's a cubic. And I'm going to take this function, I'm going to find the derivative of that function. And you guys have already practiced this by finding the derivative of a line, or I'm sorry, of a curve. Of a curve. And so we're looking at the tangent line, and we're going to find the slopes of this. And it's going to find all these slopes. So that blue line going across the stage, you, or the screen, those are positive slopes, positive slopes, positive slopes, oh, positive slopes. So the blue line coming down here was all the values of the slopes. It's now at zero. Can you know, negative slopes, negative slopes, all those points are negative. Negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes, oh, zero. Mm -hmm. And then we start to get positive again. So what do you notice about this function? What does it look like? Right, well, we've seen these curves before. That looks like a parabola, like an x squared type of function. This was x cubed. This is x squared. So just from that, you should notice we're going from an x cubed to an x squared. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Let's look at, take the derivative of the blue function that I just made black. Okay, let's take the derivative of this one now. Take the derivative, and we get a negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, still negative, 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 negative slope. You'll start to see the point soon. Negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. Zero, at the minimum, zero. Keep on going positive slopes. Now that's a line. Now that dotted line is a line. So when the original function was an x cubed, the red one was x cubed, blue was x squared, and then just plain old x. So what do you notice about the exponents? It seems like they're always going down by one. Okay, so let's go back to our rule. All right, so it sounds like we're ready to talk about the power rule. So given a function y equals x to the power n, then the derivative, well, the derivative is going to be that power is going to subtract by 1. So we already know that x is now going to be x with n minus 1. Because it went from x cubed, x squared, to x as we went and took the derivatives. And we also know one more thing. Right. That n that was over first in the derivative it comes down front. So it's n times x to the power n minus 1. That's okay. the power rule. Let's and take that's a look. in your formula pack, too. Right. Let's take a look and see, do an example. So here's f, f of x equals 1 third x cubed minus 2 x squared plus 4. These are so fun. They are. Okay, find the first and second derivative. I'm just going to say f prime of x. Super. So that equals. So I have 1 third. And I, I always like to bring my power out first. Oh, okay. Do you do the 1 third first? I sure. always do I, the, So I do 3. 3, okay. Power comes down. 1 third. X. And the 3 becomes a 2 now. We subtract Square. 1. Minus. Minus. Bring the 2 bring down. The 2 down. 2 times. 2. two. The X. X. And if I had something written here, it would be X to the 0. So what happens when I bring that 0 down? That whole Function, constant is gone. Right, it's gone. It's just 0. So now we're left with 3 times 1 third, which is just 1. So I have X squared minus 4X. And that is the first derivative. Well, the second derivative... Now I can just write double prime. Mm -hmm. Follow this process again. Bring my 2 down in front. 2 times x minus. Bring my 1 down on the front. 4. Now this becomes a 0, which is just 1. That's the right. And then our third derivative, we could keep on going this for a long time, is um, two. 2. Bring the 1 down, 2 times 1, and there's just 2 left. And there is our first derivative. Now, we're going to check the first derivative with our calculator. All right, so if we go to our calculator now, let's put in this equation. Mm, 1 divide 3. x to the power of 3. Make sure that you are being an active listener as we're going along, and you are typing stuff into your calculator. Maybe you can move a little faster than us, pushing pause. Solving the problem before us. Okay, so if I just graph this this function, it looks like that. And I want to graph the derivative now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to y equals 2. And there's a couple ways to do this one. If I go to math and I toggle all the way down to number 8, n deriv. I want to find the derivative of y1. So I go, I should maybe 
put my key history up so you can see what I'm clicking. If I go now vars into y variables to function, function 1, I want to take the derivative of the y1 with respect to x, and I want to do it to every single x. And if I graph that, there it is right there. And we can find the name of that graph just to check our work, right? Just hit trace. Ah, right. I think it'll, if I hit trace, it might just give me, it'll give me, just end derivative. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. There are other ways to do it too, but I always, this is the one I'm going to concentrate on right now. And this is the... I guess we could check it just by putting it in our equation if we wanted to and make sure that they lie on top of each yep, other. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. And so then we come over here. And if I type in what I believe my function was... X squared minus 4X. X squared, oh, squared minus 4X. And let's go on top over here, make it bold so we can see where it's going. Make it bold, and let's graph. And it goes right on top. We're good. Okay. All right. Let's do one more example here. All so, right. Given that y is the cube root of x minus 1 over x squared plus 5 times x to the 10th minus 2 over the square root of x to the 5th. Find the derivative. Mm, wow. So dy dx, we got to find. Well, first, you know what I like to right. do is rewrite this because... These are hard to see what the power really is. You're so on top of this. So this is x to the one-third minus. Now instead of saying one over x squared, I can just say that's the same thing as x to the minus negative two, two plus five x to the tenth minus two times x to the negative one-fifth. Oh, no, we got to go... Oh, it's on oh. the bottom of the fraction. We're gonna... It is 5 over 2. Yeah, we have 5 over 2. 5 over 2. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. dy dx. We bring our power down, 1 third. Times x. Subtract 1 from here, I get negative 2 thirds. Minus. Minus. Bring my power down. Negative 2. Subtract 1 from the power. Negative 3. Bring my power down. 10 times. 5 times x to the ninth. Minus. Bring your negative 5 halves down. Oh, look at your negative sign there. Thank you. Uh, minus 5 halves to x. The negative. We're going to put our two as well. Uh, this is why it's good to do it in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, seven halves. Seven halves. All right. That's really ugly. we got to clean it up. Yeah. Let's make it look a little bit nicer. So, not much we can do with the first part. So, we get one-third x to negative two-thirds. Plus... plus 2x to the negative 3 plus 50x to the ninth plus, plus 5. Right, because the 2's cancel. x negative 7 halves. Sweet. Nice. Okay. All right, I don't know if we have one more or not. Nope, nope. that's it for now.